Hello everyone and welcome to the third Picotron GUI lesson. Today we're learning about checkboxes, radio buttons and sliders. As we've seen in previous episodes, we start always by doing this, creating a new file. This is recommended. Create the GUI by assigning it to a variable and then calling our GUI in the draw and the update function. After creating our GUI, first of all, I want to create the container where everything is stored. So I want to use my loved function field background, which in this case, I want to call just background. And you're going to see in a second why. All right. This just fills the background with a color. If you've seen previous episodes, you know. All right. So here we have our settings container. Now, just because our file is going to get big, I want to put this in a new file and call it draw GUI. We have to include that here. Yeah, after we did that, we want to start making our radio button. First of all, I'd like to make an array or a table where I store all values I want in my radio buttons in this case. I want one button which represents easy, one represents medium, and one hard. As usual, this is just how I do things. You can do anything however you want. So now we can finally attach a new element to our settings. Let's make it start from 10, 10. Then we can make it with settings that with minus 20. You're gonna see in a second why. And it's eight, let's make it like 40. Then we make it draw method as always. Then we can print something inside like uh, faculty slash t just uh, means a tab, right? I want to give it a current value, which by default, it's easy. And here we just do self dot current. We put it, I don't know, in five, five. All right. So here we have the label. Now, as you can see, by doing minus 20, I have the same space here and here. If I did minus 10, it would have been there. Why? Because settings.width is 150. So if width was 150, this radio element would have finished in 160 because it starts from 10. This width is just the point at the end, starting from X. I hope uh, it is clear. I know not that easy for everyone. So now I want to add three containers, one here, one at the center, and one at the right. Let's start easy. Radio attach, start this from 0, 15. I want its width to be 35 and its height 20. Then we do our usual draw method with the background to show it and give it a seven value. Here we have it. Now we want to make three of these. So as usual, we make them inside a for loop. For equal to start. That's why we made our table here. Until the number of radio elements minus one. We have to do minus one here because we want this cycle to create only three containers, right? And we start from zero. Why do we start from zero? Because we're using this counter to multiply our x value. So on every iteration, i makes our x change. How? We just do i multiplied by 35, which is our width of our element. Let's see. Yeah, as you see now, we created more, but we can see them, right? Now we can finally evolve our background function and make it do borders how we just do it like this we give it another value and we give this value a default one we just do border equals to border this one or false if i call this just by doing this as i do to fill the background then border is going to be false we do if not border then do what we always did else yeah do this but i don't want it to be filled i just want the rectangle right all right give it he through here but as you can see, it doesn't show good because you have to do minus one here and minus one here. Now we have our three containers. Okay, now just for simplicity and just because I want you to understand better what we're doing, we're going to add some local variables. Radio BTN with 35. Uh, radio BTN left margin. Make it like 10. So if I add this here, what you think is going to happen? 
we add a left margin to our container. Inside here, now, we want to draw our radio button. I want to draw it in a new function. First of all, here, we want to create a circle. This circle has to start at center of the element. So let's create some local variable, center x, center y. And center x will just be our self width divided by 2. Center y is going to be our self height divided by 2. So then in our circle, we just do center x, center y. And how big we want it, like 5, with uh, one color. We have to pass it self as a value. Maybe the color, if you want to. Then here, we call it. All right. We have our circle inside our container. Now we don't want this no more. We want in each one of this something to happen, a tap. Remember this current we made? We can call it here. We can do radio dot current equals to the current radio element plus one because it starts <laughs> from zero. Now, if I press this, it will stay easy. If I press this, it's going to turn in medium. Yeah. Yeah, it works because we changed it here. All right, so we want something different to happen on selected, right? We can do it in a lot of ways, but one way is just something like this local selected equals to if radio dot current is equal to radio element i plus one, then selected is true, else it's false. So if this element has been tapped basically, then it's true, else it's false. We can add this selected here in our draw function and go change it. We can add another circle on top that represents the button when it's selected. A smaller circle. Look at this. If selected, then circle fill on the same position because the circle position starts at its center. And we make it a little bit smaller, like 3, the same color. Now look at this. See? Easy. Hard, medium. Not bad, right? So now for checkboxes, we're going to do the same thing, but they're going to be checkboxes. So we need another container and we can use this one because it's the height we like. We call it checkbox. We make it start from 10, it's good, but the Y has to be radio dot height plus 20. All right. We don't want here to be written difficulty, but we want select options. And this current is no longer needed. I mean, we could comment it out or delete it, but it's not needed in this case. But as always, you can do whatever you want, right? And we basically need to do the same thing, right? So we do the same thing. Let's call them differently now. So we want this to be attached to our checkbox, right? As you see now, we have them. And we want inside no longer some circles, but we want there some boxes, some 10 pixel boxes. Here, we're going to do draw checkbox L and create a new function called exactly like that. Draw checkbox L with self, call and selected can have this same content and here let's do rect and rect fill but rect is not like this rect needs uh, not just one value but two here so we can do the x plus 10 and the center y plus 10 all right we do the same thing here but now as you see it's not in the center why because the x and y values of the rack start from here not from the center like in the case of the circle as you can see in the center is the top left of the square so here we just do something like this minus five and minus five the center goes in the right direction yeah here we have it all right so finally we add a selected value to the checkbox with a false default value. Here we do self.selected and a tab self.selected becomes true. But yeah, we have two problems here. We can't deselect an element and it's full. It doesn't have a little bit of space like in the case of the radio buttons, right?
So to do this, we just do if self dot selected, then if this element is selected and we're clicking on it, then it needs to become false. Else self selected needs to become true. Oh yeah. Right? Here we have more and here we can only have one. Let's get this out. I mean, I like this, this design, right? It's cool, but we can give it a little bit of space by doing this plus two, plus two. It becomes like this. Then here we have to do minus two. But let's just do plus eight and plus eight. All right. Great. We've seen how to do this graphically and where do things happen, right? Well, in the case of the radio buttons, a tap is where things should happen. And the same thing with the checkbox tap. After doing this, which is just changing graphically what's happening, right? We're changing radio current and radio current ma makes uh, its label change, right? Here is where things happen. While in the case of the checkbox, things happen at self-selected true. But also here could happen some things, like if you deselect something, all right, so now for the sliders, I created a table, same table with three elements, but you can make how many you want following this logic. Now we go take the radio container and paste it because we basically need to do the same thing to make a container. Let's the settings, okay. And it's why obviously needs to start from, yeah, our checkbox. Dot, hey, no, I'm sorry. Our checkbox dot y plus checkbox dot hate. And the same thing had to be done here the checkbox radio plus y so 20 is too much as you see <laughs> it's 10 actually same thing here plus 10 yep here we have 10 is just the space between one element and the other right so here we didn't want equal t but we want slider then actually let's call this slider container because i want to create a new slider one slider container attach we make it start from x10, y15, width 110, and height 30. We give it a draw method. And here is where our slider will be. So inside here, we can make a draw slider function and create this draw slider. So as usual, to center this, we just do local center y. And we do self.width divided by 2. We need to make a line that starts from 0, x0, y, our center y, and until the end, and center y. With a color that the user chooses. Oh yeah, here, hate guys, not width, because we want it on the center of the y axis. Okay, here we have it. All right, so to create our little pointer, we can do it like this. We can make a new slide position here and give it a 55 default value. So here we can do rect fill self dot slider pos minus one because we don't want a point because a point it's too little. We want a little square center y minus one self dot slider pos plus one and enter y. No, I think one is too little. Let's make it two. Okay, oops, it was a slide. All right, here we have it. Now, as you already imagined, this slide pause, it's what we need to change to also change this one, right? How? We can start by adding our click function. We can add the new click value. And in our click function, we do self.click equal to true. And in release, we do self.click equal to false. Why? Because update will do some magic. <laughs> what magic? If self.click, first thing we need to do here is get our mouse position. And some of you may know, we can do it by doing something like this, right? But if we do this, it won't get our local position, the position inside the slider, but we will get our absolute position. And because in our case, we start from 50 and not from zero, it's not going to work. I'm going to tell you. So we can just do this. We have to do this separately for the moment. We can do something like get real mouse position. And here we do that. Now I'm just going to do something fast, like we want to get the offset. So what is the offset? The offset is just 
the X of the settings container, which is the first one we made, right? The X of the slider container plus the X of the slider itself. So we do settings.x plus slider container dot x plus self dot x then we just return the mouse x position minus our offset by doing this what uh, returns here is not the mouse the absolute mouse position anymore but the local mouse position now we can call it here and do local mouse x equal to real mouse position so now we can do self dot light pause equal to mouse x <laughs> as you can see it follows now but it even goes away and we don't want this to happen right so we just put this inside an if condition we just check if mouse x is bigger than two we have the local one right and if it is smaller than self dot width minus three i want a little bit of offset and here we have it so now inside here we can make uh, this slider container dot current change right this should be slider select one right here we can I like to do something like this with current position self dot slide pause divided by self dot width. Why we do this? Because this will give us a value smaller than one to compare. So now I can do something like if current position is smaller than one third, then our slider container dot current will be equal to slider select one. Else if current position is smaller then two third then we do the same thing but with two else the third one i hope you understand this so if current position is smaller than one third we have first two thirds we have second else which is bigger than two third we have third all right see ya in the next one